Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hi, Calvary. Amber here. Today we're going to wrap up the book of Ruth. Uh, And as we come uh, to the clothing of this book, uh, chapter 4 is all about how Boaz redeems Ruth. There's this whole situation where there's another closer relative, um, but he can't redeem her, so they exchange sandals. You can read about it. It's really interesting. And Boaz then is the one who gets to redeem and marry Ruth. And they get married and they have a son. And we're going to pick up in verse 14. And it says, Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a redeemer. And may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and became his nurse. And the women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. See, this is a beautiful story of redemption and how God worked to provide and bring about restoration and hope and new life. See, um, it is a reversal from the first chapter till now. Naomi says that she is empty and bitter, and now she is full and celebrating and praising God. Um, it's a, a story of how God redeems lives. And the women get to bless God, recognizing that God is the one who brings restoration and hope and redemption and new life. And they celebrate and praise God because of what he's done in Ruth and Naomi's life. And we should recognize God's goodness and redemption in our lives and in the lives around us. Sometimes it's really easy to get distracted by the darkness in the world. But thankfully, Jesus is a light and no darkness can overcome him. But we have to be intentional in recognizing and looking for the ways that God is working and moving because he always is, but sometimes we're not aware of it and don't look for it. But if we choose to look for it and see it, then we can be grateful and praise God because of that. And if we're intentional every day to do that, praising God and thanking him for working in our lives and bringing about redemption, it changes our attitude and it changes our hearts. The other really amazing thing about the book of Ruth is that it, and the whole Bible, is that it all points to Jesus. See, the book of Ruth is written to point to David um, because the next book is Samuel. Um, But the importance of David is not because he was the best king in Israel, but because he's a foreshadowing of the Messiah, Jesus. And Jesus is the most important person in the world. And the whole Bible points to Jesus. All of the Old Testament points to Jesus and all the New Testament is pointing to Jesus as well. And so I encourage you to read the entire Bible looking for how it all points to Jesus. You don't have to read it all in a year, but read through the Bible. I love reading the Bible chronologically. The way our Bible is written and laid out isn't chronological. It's arranged by literary structure, Um, but you can look up uh, just chronological reading plans and it will put it all in order for you. But however you choose to read through the Bible, read the Bible, get to know God's word and what he wants to say to you. And if you read it, God will change your life. But the Bible all points to Jesus and we need to have our lives pointing to Jesus as well. We all need redemption in our life, and thankfully Jesus offers that. He left heaven, he left perfection to come to earth, to live a perfect and sinless life that we couldn't, to take all of our punishment and consequences of sin and nail it to the cross. And he defeated sin and death on that cross. He rose three days later, and he is king and savior of the world. And so have you, surrendered your life? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? If you don't, you can do that right now. Just talk to God. That's all praying is, talking to God and say that you're a sinner and that you desperately need Jesus to forgive you of your sin and surrender your life to following him. If you have that relationship with Jesus, are you living in the hope that he gives you? 
Are you looking for the ways that his goodness is surrounding your life? Do you praise him for what he's done and what he's going to do? I hope that no matter where you're at, you can take that next step of surrender and following Jesus today. He loves you and he's always with you. Have a great day.